Welcome everyone. I'm going to call to order the Joint City Council HRA Planning Commission work session. It is June 21st at 5.45 p.m. and we have two items on our agenda. One is the introduction and preliminary discussion of future plans for the Minnesota Independence Community College and or Independence College and Community, excuse me, and discussion of a new development proposal for the property at 101 66th Street East. And so I would say we probably have about half an hour for each item. So I'm going to turn it over to Community Development Director Stark. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, this is actually going to be quick because I'm going to turn it right over to <laughs> Assistant Community Development Director Melissa Palman for this item. Thank you, Chair Seppel, members of the board, uh, planning commission, and council. I'm going to be very quick as well. We have a lot to get through tonight. Um, but tonight's work session uh, with MICC is really intended as an introduction um, of them and their program to you. They have been operating in the city of Richfield since 1996. Um, but they operate fairly quietly out of the colony apartments. And I think a lot of people don't even know that they exist there. So we're going to begin with a little bit of an introduction um, from their staff and then talk about their plans for future growth. What we're looking for uh, from you tonight is really some initial reaction to those plans, um, some thoughts on possible comprehensive plan or zoning changes that may be needed to move forward with some of those plans, and just uh, your initial um, feelings about support for the project. So I'm just going to turn it right over to um, Amy Goodmastad and Bob Cunningham uh, to do their presentation. Yep, up here would be great. There on the screen, you see uh, Bumpy Lane, and underneath you see a couple of small little logos, and that's uh, Krauss Anderson and Inland Development Partners. I last stood in front of this uh, group in 2018 uh, when we were going through the approvals for the Chamberlain, which is now up and running, and I'm happy to report that it's 96% lease. Uh, some of the council has changed over since then, um, but uh, that, that is the uh, genesis of Bumpy Lane was the Krauss Anderson Inland Development Partner Joint Venture, uh, which owns and built the Chamberlain. Uh, and we are the development side of the MICC and Bumpy Lane uh, Joint Venture, which we're looking to, uh, to, we're going to be performing the development side of the project when we get to that point. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to follow up at the end and talk about uh, the project. But uh, before we get to that, Amy is going to introduce everybody to uh, MICC and their good works. Do Sorry. we need to have a microphone yes. so you. that people can hear? I hope you could, you could hear me. For the recording. It helps for the recording, yeah. All right. Does this work? Can people hear this? It's green. It's green. Talking like that works? OK. Yep. So hello, everyone. I don't think I've met everyone. Afternoon, evening, Mayor. We um, are MICC. I am Amy Goodmistead, the executive director at MICC. I've been with the organization since 2004. And as Melissa said, the organization has been quietly nestled in the city of Richfield since 1996. Um, and Minnesota Independence College and Community, which I will refer to as MICC, is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit organization that has been serving young adults on the autism spectrum and with learning differences for, for very um, many, many years. So MICC is something that is very, very special and um, is um, making a difference in not only in this community, but in the lives of many individuals on the autism spectrum. Our program is providing um, education and community support for young adults to be able to move out of their parents' homes, get the skills they need to be able to live independently, and to have a competitive employment job. We have um, students that come from all over the state of Minnesota, um, and actually all over the country. 
I should say. You recruit nationally, and they come into our program. We serve about 150 participants out of the Colony Apartments Wood Lake Church. We've had to expand, so we're renting more space down the street. And we have some property on 76 that we've acquired and are also running programming out of there. Um, what is MICC is teaching independent living skills, vocational skills, social engagement, and health and wellness. So our program is giving our students the skills necessary to be able to have a quality of life, to be able to live outside of their parents' homes and to take care of themselves. And our curriculum is all taught not necessarily in classrooms, but all in, in the community. So um, we are very passionate about being in Richfield. Um, we think that one of the secrets to our success are our partnerships, and Richfield has also been a critical partner for us. It has been, an, or it has been a city community that has um, not only allowed our participants to live um, in the area. We have so many graduates that don't return to their hometown. In fact, we have about 98% of our graduates will become Richfield residents upon graduation. And that is saying a lot because our students come from different states. So um, they're leaving their home states and making a permanent life for themselves here in Richfield. So why is Richfield so special to us? We believe that Richfield is a community and a city that allows for sustainable independence. And how do we define sustainable independence for people um, with disabilities and on the autism spectrum? And that is sustainable independence is access to employment, it's access to transportation, it's access to housing options, to social experiences, to community gatherings, it's access to being an active citizen in their community. And Richfield naturally provides that for our participants. So we love being in Richfield, and Richfield, in response, takes very good um, care of us without really doing anything out of the normal. They are just doing what they normally do. So, for example, we teach so many real life skills experiences, and so we'll tap into the city of Richfield, different agencies to come in and actually teach classes. So it's not uncommon for the police department to come in and have um, a class on community safety. The fire department comes every year and teaches the students how to create their exit routes from their apartments, how to put out the grease fires, and um, how to access whenever they're in an emergency. So we are integrating our students into the community by in introducing them to all the resources that are out there. The other thing we have are public transportation courses. So all of our students have to be able to be able to ride public transportation um, because again, once they get a job, they need to be able to get to and from. Um, work. So um, the other portion of what we do is employment. And there are multiple Richfield businesses that not only hire our students, but also um, provide a curriculum to teach them. So we are located right across the street from Best Buy. Best Buy has been teaching a corporate um, employment class for about five years. So we, our students go onto that um, campus and they learn how to um, what skills are in the corporate setting, the social etiquette in a corporate setting, how to navigate, and they actually end up getting employment in that um, building. Arc Value Village, you're all familiar with them. Great partnership. Their practicum site, the Historical Society, Woodlake Church. Again, all examples of groups that are hiring, but also providing educational opportunities. So we're, we are intermixed in the community there. Um, so I'm trying to get, get the high level stuff. So I, and I would like to just pause and extend an invitation to all of you to come out to campus and actually kind of see and live what we're doing. This, the, what we call the college students, they're all off on summer break. Thank goodness. <laughs> they all needed a break. And I'll just say for the record too, we, had, um, we were in session during COVID following our strict protocols and we did not have one positive case. Not even one positive case. Um, so we're really proud of that. Um, so with this project, MICC is looking to, um, as you, can, you heard, we're in the colony complex. We have property on 76th, and then we're expanding into the Woodlake Church. One of the things we've seen recently in the last five years is additional financial support and avenues for our families. 
um, where we used to be primarily private pay, that financial accessibility door has opened recently for MICC and our families. So we are seeing an increase in um, enrollment, which is putting a kind of a demand on our program space. So we, we need more space for our program. We also know that autism is not going away. Um, in fact, it's a pretty cool thing um, to have, in, in my opinion, because the, our students are pretty awesome. But there is a growing need. And I think MICC, amongst other um, groups in, the, in Minnesota, are doing a fantastic job working with people on the spectrum. Um, so, and we've got that nestled here in, in Ridgefield. So we want to continue to leverage the style of work that we've been doing for the last 25 years, and that is partnerships. And so we are so thrilled to be able to be partnering with Bumpy Lane, um, Inland, and Krauss Anderson as we kind of talked about this project and saying, what would it be like? Could we do this? We have this property. Um, and they step forward as, as just good partners. Um, and wanting to give back to the city of Ridgefield as well. Um, and so that's where we find ourselves today. And so, so this is really purely just, we wanted you to know who MICC was. We've been in front of council before. Some of you are maybe familiar, but I know um, I'd love for you to come out um, and visit and meet some of our students. And you might actually probably know them if you're ever in Walgreens, Pizza Luce, Sierra Trading Company, Speedway, I mean, Blondes and Byerly's, they're, they're all over town. So. I'll hand it over to you, Bob, and do there have any questions? Thank you, Amy. And I'll speak into the microphone this time. I apologize for that. So the, the big question is, why are we here tonight? As Amy said a moment ago, MICC leases space at the Colony Apartments and at uh, the, the church. Uh, what we're looking to do is secure the long-term future for MICC in Richfield through a building program. Uh, the building program that we've got envisioned would be owned by a combination of not-for-profit entities controlled by MICC primarily. The building itself would house, you'll see there's no architecture whatsoever on here, um, but the building itself would house both the office and classroom functions of MICC as well as on the upper floors there would be residential for uh, affordable slash low income housing for the students and graduates of MICC, as well as the uh, community at large. It'd be serving both the community at large and the students and graduates. That's important to MICC because they want their students and graduates to have a community involvement, not just be sequestered or uh, in, in a building that is just the graduates and students of the project. Uh, is you have in your council uh, packet, there's a map that Melissa put together that shows the location that's proposed, and that's between Logan and Newton along 76th Street, as Amy mentioned. The MICC uh, already owns three lots there. They use one of the uh, buildings as part of their function the other one is one of the buildings, and they're all three single family residences right now. Uh, one of the buildings is empty, and the other is leased to uh, a resident that just you know is a tenant there. So the vision is to uh, combine those three lots and create a building that would be four or five stories tall, with like I said a moment ago, the grade level function being classroom. And, uh, and offices for MICC, and 50 to 70 units of housing. The uh, financing of the project is still kind of in the very, very, very preliminary elements. Uh, and we're going to be going through tax credit applications and kind of the difficult road of putting low income housing uh, financing together to get this done. Two things that we'd like to ask for the council and the planning commission and the HRA tonight is feedback on the vision that we've got before you. No architecture involved yet. Also, you can see this is directly across from Best Buy, but the two things that we're going to ask for is kind of a feedback on whether this is an appropriate land use. Uh, should we continue along this line of thinking between, you know, on 76th Street, 
And then the other thing we're going to be asking for, not tonight, but we just want to ask uh, down the road when it's appropriate for a resolution of support from the city council so that we can take, and the HRA both, so that we can take that to um, put that in our applications for various funding mechanisms to make that to allow this project to come together. And finally, uh, John, I'm just going to put it right to you. We're going to need some help from the city staff to uh, kind of go through the myriad of the uh, financing mechanisms to get this done as well. So uh, we're looking to once again have a public private partnership uh, to get something done in Richfield that would serve both the MICC students, graduates, and the community at large with additional affordable and slash low income housing. And with that, we'd uh, love to answer any questions that anybody might have this evening. Are there any questions? All right, Council Member Whalen. Thank you, Chair Seppel. Um, presumably, this would also, um, I guess this maybe is up to the owner of the colony apartments, but presumably, I guess my question is, would you be moving out of there, which then would presumably open up more housing in addition to creating this housing? Would, would this be a complete replacement or? No, this would be an addition. Um, okay. So we anticipate pulling out um, a portion of ourselves out of that, and those would then be back into housing options for folks. But we still anticipate using um, that space for um, participants. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Onisorg. Um, so this year we graduated 16 participants. Um, so that um, that's pretty typical in the last five years. So we've been slowly growing. Our graduating classes are getting larger and larger. Chair Kwam. Thank you for your presentation. Um, of the 50 to 70 units of housing, um, are they all affordable? How's it, and then how many, you said they're available to the community too, and what, what percentage would be available to the general public? Our intention would be that the, uh, all, all 50 to 70 units, every unit, no matter what the total is, uh, would all be low income or affordable. Uh, and with respect to um, doing that blend of how many are going to be available at large and how many would be available to the students and Graduates, it, right now, I think the best guess that we would have would be roughly 50-50. So as a follow-up to that, are they all one bedroom or are there different sizes? There would be different size units. Uh, we have done very little programming in terms of the units themselves, uh, but the initial planning was that we would have roughly a 50-50 ratio between ones and two bedrooms and larger. Council Member Troutman. Thank you, Chair Supple, and uh, thank you both. It's uh, good to see you again. And um, a couple, couple of questions about the the project. One of these of the units, how many are are ADA accessible? And then, will is it a, a the nonprofit organization that would that would hold the land? Would there be any tax revenue that the city would see? Is, are you looking for any financing support from the city? Just, just kind of broad sure. high, opportunities to speak to that. From a high level perspective, uh, you know, it, I think that buildings like this are taxed. Uh, so there would be tax revenue to the city. But frankly, uh, one of the things that would help this model work is to work through a tax increment financing package. So we would likely be looking at that. Uh, I think that answers uh, one of your questions. Um, and I can't remember what the other one was. I'm sorry. ADA accessibility, oh, oh, ADA so ADA. accessibility for the, the units. Uh, we would have uh, at least the ADA. The ADA standard is generally 5%. It's probable that we would add additional units that would be ADA compliant given the, the likely uh, mix of tenants in the building. Again, very little programming has been done at this point. Thank you. Other questions? Mayor Regan Gonzalez. 
Thank you so much for the presentation and thank you for coming. Um, I've had such great experiences with MICC and I know one of my first jobs at, at the public health department was to work with MICC on um, healthy food preparation and food skills and that was really fun. Um, but I, I would say just a few initial thoughts. I am very excited about the proposal overall and I'm always thinking about how we can lift um, Richfield up as a regional attraction in the metro um, that can help distinguish us from our, our neighboring cities statewide or even nationally. So just thinking about how this um, potential for the future could really help um, put Richfield on the map in that way would be so great to be the home of such an innovative educational experience for students with autism. And then I also think about um, the role that Best Buy could play in that. So it's great to see that they're already a partner and I would just encourage and offer my support in really trying to get Best Buy to the table in a very serious way in this, um, in this project uh, because it's super important that they invest in their own backyard, which is Richfield, um, not just in, here in the Twin Cities, but this is a great opportunity for that. Um, and then I would also add, I'm so glad to know that there's additional funding being freed up because I, I knew that that was such a big barrier for a lot of low-income families was that private pay tuition, and now this is something that's accessible to more people. Um, so in terms of the, depending on the affordability, I would say if it's deeply affordable housing, and this is something that, you know, staff has talked about, um, and we found in our experience to make sure that how could we bring in wraparound community support services, maybe there's different types of staff and programming on site to help provide that um, community support and that feel of community, but connect people to resources. So um, that might be one idea to consider with your community partners. Um, and then... Let's see, I think those I think those were all the comments, but overall, the biggest thing I would say is this is an opportunity to sh to be a shining example of some really cool transformational work that is a partnership with corporate, a partnership with uh, MICC and the community of Richfield. So just finding ways to weave in um, all those different groups and stakeholders, it will be better for our community and better for MICC. And we have such great assets we can leverage. Thank you. I would completely agree with that. We have, um, I think what we have is already special, and I think this is a project that we could really highlight when nonprofit, for profit, and community come together and can make something work for their, the citizens of, their, of the, their city. So we are already doing this, and I think we have a really cool opportunity to leverage this and get this out there to other folks because of the way the city is just naturally already working with us. Thank you. Council Member Hayford O'Leary. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just, I appreciate everything that's been said and I uh, agree with almost all of it about the big picture. I did just wanna make a couple comments about the land use in the building. Um, I generally am supportive of this. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, my only hesitations were one, locking down a, a pretty important commercial street to something that I assumed wouldn't pay tax, but if staff can confirm, maybe not now that in fact this could be tax paying, I'd be more com comfortable with the subsidy aspect of it. Um, the other concern I have is just that these are kind of two isolated blocks, and this isn't you know, the applicant's issue, two isolated blocks of single family homes surrounded by much denser land use. Um, I would love to see us address the whole two blocks together depending on the timing of this proposal and get it all to mixed use, especially given the Orange Line Station that will be walking distance and I'm sure will be useful to your residents. Um, so basically, I. I, I, I like the idea, I like this uh, proposal, and I think it makes a lot of sense in this location. Um, I just hope we can dot our I's and cross our T's to make it as organized as possible for the whole area. Thank you, are there other questions or comments? I also wanted to thank you for bringing this proposal forward because I think it's a really important service that you're providing for the members of our community. I had one just logistical thing. It looks to me like this is all going to be surface parking, and I know you're on transit and stuff, but there's no underground parking, or is it all just surface? The plan right now is that this would be surface parking, uh, and you know, ultimately, we need to price it with some below-grade parking as well. 
uh, and we'll, we need to see what kind of financing we are going to be able to put together to see if that's something that we can include when we come back to the council and the HRA and the Planning Commission uh, with a, something with a little more architecture attached to it. But you're right. What you're looking at right now is, prim is all surface parking. All right, because I know being across the street from Best Buy, the traffic considerations have all been taken into consideration, so I don't think this is going to impact traffic-wise, but all right, thank you. Council Member Whalen. Um, I realized I didn't mention before. I, I agree with what's been said. I think this is a great opportunity overall. The two quick things I'd say as you get into more of the details that I would be excited to see um, one, if this isn't already in the um, in your thinking, just that uh, affordability is not a single label. That I think um, making sure it's a range of um, certainly what we're most in need of, but is also hardest to get, is the thirty percent AMI um, affordability, uh, and that not everyone needs that. And so um, having a variety. Um, that way as well. And then the last thing I'll say that um, I, I hope, and it, this I'm confident is already on your radar, but just I think given how many wonderful partnerships you already have, I'm excited to see how the building can highlight that and not like, okay, now we have our own space, let's go like be ourselves on our own, but like how does whatever the first floor looks like, how does that get designed to encourage even more partnerships? I'm excited to, to see as this takes shape. Are there any other questions before we switch topics? All right, um, Chair Kwam. Nobody else has one. I have one more. Um, the main concern I have is um, the land use aspect being on the Planning Commission. So I think it the report said we'd have to move beyond the limits of the mixed use to do the conceptual plans and then um, the other one and change, possibly change the comp plan. So concerned about those. Chair Kwam, thank you. Um, right now the comprehensive plan calls for this area to be medium density housing. It calls for this entire two block area that um, Council Member Hayford O'Leary was talking about to me to be medium density housing. We haven't rezoned it yet because as is our typical policy, we don't rezone single family properties until a proposal comes forward. With this particular proposal, it does look a little bit larger and with ground floor, I'm gonna call it institutional school type use, um, that wouldn't typically be allowed in a, an MR2 district. So yes, we would likely um, or they would likely need to come to you to look at a mixed use designation or something similar um, on this corner. And then you could certainly explore the blocks behind, but as of now, it's all guided for medium density housing. All right, thank you. Um, Assistant Director Palman, is there any other feedback that staff needs? No, I don't believe so. Uh, Bob and Amy, did you need any additional information? No additional information needed, but uh, we'll, we're looking forward to being back in front of uh, the, the Planning Commission, the HRA, and the City Council as uh, additional develops warrant, and that should be sooner rather than later. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you for your presentation. All right, so our second item is a discussion of a new development proposal for the property at 10166th Street East, site of the previous approved ME development. Um, Community Director Stark. Thank you, Chair Supple. Yeah, if this is familiar to many of you, it's because um, you've been viewing several iterations of this since at least, um, early 2018, it might have been even late 2017 that this first came to your attention. And at that point in time, uh, a development company called PLH and Associates or Paul Lynch had proposed uh, and received approvals uh, in the summer of 2018. Um, he was unable to um, get the project going at that point in time with what was approved. So he did return in, in 2020 and revised uh, the proposal to include 1,800 square feet of ground floor commercial space and 42 apartments. Um, the PLH 
uh, eventually marketed the property for sale and um, has sold it. I'm not sure if it's a contingent sale or if it's um, what the, the status of the sale is currently, but the prospective buyer is North Bay Companies. Uh, North Bay, again, is somebody you may be familiar with as they developed the Henley and the Henley II um, in Richfield and, and have been talking to you um, perhaps about some other projects as well. So tonight, North Bay Company will present a preliminary proposal for a new project on this site. The proposal includes a 75-unit, six-story residential building and a single-story commercial building of approximately 3,200 square feet. Uh, and I'm sure uh, I've received a lot of neighborhood in, um, comment, and I'm sure you have as well. Uh, and it's a, it's a very active neighborhood, um, very involved in, in how this site would be developed and what, what they'd like to see there. Uh, and so um, we've been in discussions with the neighborhood folks uh, since the beginning. Um, what I've said, uh, the, the neighbors have asked me questions about a neighborhood meeting, uh, and depending on how things go tonight, uh, my answer is that because they're not seeking the kind of land use approvals that would require them to have a neighborhood meeting, that's the case. But I would certainly recommend that even though one is not required, that they would hold one. Uh, and so with that, I would introduce Mick Stoddard from DJR Architects and Dan Oberpriller from North Bay Companies. Um, and um, if we can, I think we're all set up here. Do this. Uh, Mick Starter with DJR Architecture. Um, I think as uh, John pointed out, is this yeah, speak into the, the mic? Right. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, Familiar with the site, it is uh, right on 66th uh, between 1st and uh, Stevens Avenue. And we are proposing a uh, mixed use building uh, with the commercial on the corner of uh, 66 and 1st. And the uh, residential portion, uh, the remainder of the, the remainder of the block. Um, there will be structured parking on the uh, underground the, underneath the uh, entire building and then a small section um, on the first floor that you would access uh, through the site off of First Street. Uh, the main entrance to the building, uh, excuse me, main entrance to the uh, underground parking garage uh, would be off of uh, Stevens Avenue, uh, furthest down to the, to the south. Um, the amount of, the number of units is uh, 77, excuse me, 75. And if I want to go to the next slide, Oh, that one, okay. Well, there we go, great. Uh, floors two through six, it is a uh, six story building. Floors two through six will have um, a mixture of studios, one bedrooms and two bedroom units. Um, the two bedroom units are on the corner uh, that faces uh, Stevens Avenue and 66th. Um, we will have walk-up units on the first floor. Over in the diagram to the right. Um, there will be four, four uh, one-bedroom units and a two-bedroom unit to face on to 66. Activate the uh, 66th Street side of the project um, along with the plaza between the retail and the residential building. Um, it will be used by both uh, whatever, uh, by the commercial portion of the project and the residential portion. Um, parking again is uh, structured along with uh, surface parking for the commercial portion uh, behind the building. My name is Daniel, and perhaps I can articulate just a little bit more here. There's about a six foot difference in the site, about six feet, right? Yes. About six feet difference in the site from here to here. Oh, in height, yes. In height, basically elevation. So the down, the down ramp to get underneath the parking, which would be another under grade, uh, comes in off of first, right? Yeah. Or Stevens, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. And then the on grade parking uh, right here would be the service stalls, and then as well as the on grade garage door for interior parking, which would be on level one, basically, uh, or grade. Um, happens right here. 
so there are two different access points to the building to break up the parking uh, on from each side. I would want to point out too, just for everyone's yeah. the, the building portions on that area of the garage is backed up. There's only one floor. One, so one story. One story. So we are we're pretty we're massed in the building up against the building. So um, yeah, so it goes to about right here, right? Yes. Correct. That's where we're showing right there. So this is a single story, and there's a rooftop deck basically held back on all sides uh, of the rooftop deck. You, you can only have a maximum square footage, I think, of 750, is that right? Um, yes. For, ex for exits and fire conditions, I guess, uh, on a rooftop deck. And so you wouldn't ever see, really see that, given the, the distance from here to here, just as far away as the exits. I think we have two views of, the, of what we're proposing. Uh, one's from the corner of uh, 66th and 1st, and the other from uh, Stevens. We can flip through those. I show the general idea of, of uh, massing of the project and how the two are tied together, the commercial and the residential portion by the uh, plaza that uses both. So the idea was to activate the corner with the uh, commercial space and use the remainder of the site for the residential portion. So this isn't 100% baked yet. Uh, visitor callers uh, always look for uh, neighborhood and city input on uh, some articulation. Uh, just trying to hit some main, main points of um, obviously there's active, you know, depending on the use here, uh, what's permitted or what ends up there may change the overall design and how it lays out. Um, we thought it was great. Uh, retail typically does better when it's standalone as opposed to having housing on top of it. Uh, we find it was convenient, I guess, from a parking standpoint, circulation standpoint, um, when that happens. Uh, it is one continuous site. Um, we own the site currently, uh, so we did close on it uh, just like it brought up tonight. And the parking goes below the whole entire site, not just this, not just the floor. Do I see the next one here? And this is the view of the corner of uh, Stevens and First. And you're looking at two bedroom units, one corner, all the way up. And this is the back of the house you were pointing around the house. It's the street leading out to Devil's Alley. Shows that are active uses. Building is 66 feet, 70 feet, 70 feet, six stories. And the materials you're exploring right now are um, brick, metal panel, um, and some house side up, which is fiber, uh, paper fiber cement, and then fiber cement as well. This is a sustainable building, everything will be uh, LED lights, uh, low. Low volt or low um, adjustable thermostats, a common area of all the LED lights with oxygen sensors. There's going to be a solar array on top of it. Uh, we use low POC paints as well as low flow water fixtures, smart sense water fixtures. We would be um, have programmable thermostats in the units as well as um, the ability to uh, track your utilities from a heating standpoint. Um, high efficiency water heaters. Yeah, high efficiency. Well. Water. EV charging stations. Yeah, there'll be, uh, there'll be bike parking on the exterior, obviously, is one to one. Uh, we do have electric car charging stations with Tesla on the inside and outside uh, for both cars. So it's going to be more and more popular uh, item, or at least until it has to be outfitted, or outfitted right away with them, or just here in the power load. And we can draw a lot. Um, we don't have any current potential kind of candidates for the kind of retail space, but that also could be flexible in terms of um, right now it's 3,200 square feet, it could be 2,800 square feet, 2,400 square feet. There is some pull, give and pull on that retail site. Uh, we really want to bring something that uh, the neighborhood really wants, more so than the light and empty. Uh, obviously, I think we need to start with that uh, as we make the meeting. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it's got a good opportunity.
opportunity for perhaps seating around it, including one or two tenants, um, how you create space on all three sides, uh, free the plaza, et cetera. Uh, walk the feeder to the, to the perimeter doesn't really do justice too much. I think it's really more of a generic little perimeter. It looks a little bit, un, looks a little bit weird to me because it's green. <laughs> Uh, we, we do have a water retention system. We read this past resolution, basically, and um, trying to adhere to the screening. And, and the, um, it's not a quite the same situation for uh, lights, uh, headlights, and stuff as the previous uh, design. However, um, the berming and fencing and uh, what was discussed here obviously did a lot of things in our favor. And I think it's a look. All right, so are there questions or comments from anyone here? All right, Council Member Hayford O'Leary. All right, I've got a, a few I'll try to get through as efficiently as possible. I do have just a couple questions, either for staff or the applicant. Um, I've heard concerns about traffic. Obviously, it's a larger building than the previous one and a perceived need or potential need for traffic control on 66th. Uh, who evaluates that or who determines if, if this is okay to just put this many cars out on the street? Council member Hayford O'Leary. If the applicant submits a proposal, the city's engineering department and Hennepin County would both take a look at this. Um, I don't anticipate that the traffic on 66th Street would be an issue. Um, and and the, the transportation engineers have seen the previous version, but they would also evaluate this one. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of my just general comments, I mean, in some ways I'm excited about this and that it's a, a more polished proposal is certainly more attractive than the previous one. And I'm excited to see a, a developer that has experience in delivering in Ridgefield. I am concerned about the height, um, given how much larger it is than the previous proposal. Um, if there were a way to bring that down, I would like to see that. Um, in particular, I understand the thing about the freestanding commercial space, but if it were possible to spread this out in four stories or five stories by using that, I would find that preferable. And then, um, just two kind of detailed comments, just because they're there. Um, I, I want to compliment you on the plaza setup with the commercial building the way it is now. A, a common issue with these buildings is we end up with the street life being kind of dead because everybody comes in off the parking lot. So it seems like a really good approach. A, a criticism though that that location of the ramp, I know this is early, but shining right into a neighbor's uh, windows is not is not acceptable. So there needs to be a, a lot of thought to it if the final proposal comes forward like this. And then one last thing would be just in general, can you talk about how sort of noise and light impacts, um, particularly from that balcony, even though it is set back, or if there somebody were playing music or something on the balcony, would that go into the neighborhood? Is there any means to sort of block or, or limit the spread of that noise or lights? The roof deck on the one story section. Oh, is that a question? Yeah, it is a question. Is there a means to block or control how that spreads into the neighborhood? Well, yeah, they have to adhere to the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, additional questions. Um, Chair Kwam, did you have your hand up? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have oh, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Supple. Um, so I, you said this, I'm wondering about the six stories on the corner of Stevens and 66th Street. So I can't tell from that. Um, on our page nine in our packet, which I know you don't have up, but it kind of shows the houses in the area, but I'm wondering like, as those six stories come south, what are the houses like across this, across Stevens? Where are they? Opposite. 
So the six stories end right here. Okay. So this is a single story. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Obviously, you'll be interested in a shadow study uh, comparison, basically, right? Uh, so, so just trying to keep all of the height close to the sixty six. Are there any houses um, across from the sixth stories? No, across no, Stevens. Right, right there. There's a, there's a retaining yeah. pond. There. Retaining uh, pond. Right yeah. That's, that's okay, I got my answer. <laughs> yep. Sorry, <laughs> retaining pond. Just for clarification for everybody, that one will not be developed with a house. It is a retaining pond. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then for exiting the underground parking, where will that be? I know you said the main entrance is on Stevens, so where is the main exit? It would be the same uh, speed ramp that would come right here. Okay, so the, that is across from the houses to the east? This house right here. So all those lights, 75 unit lights, will be going into that house? Um, right? We do have two entrances to exit, so it's not quite 75 cars, cars during the middle grade uh, parking area. So. Okay. So it only affects one house? I'm not saying only, but just for clarity. Okay. Yeah, that's a concern of mine, and I, I like what um, Council Member Hayford O'Leary said about, it seems like the one story is a bit a waste. Um, I know you said it's confusing, but it, couldn't there be some better signage or design change to you know, delineate the six story from the one story that those are business? It just seems like spreading it out that six story is awful high. Pardon me? Well, to use some of the one-story space above the one-story a little more efficiently so it's not just one story there. The one-story commercial, not the decor. Sorry, the one-story commercial. Yeah, spreading out some of those layers over that. All right, are there other questions or comments? Oh, Mayor Regan Gonzalez. Um, I would just say my main um, <clears throat> concern is also the height with the six stories. So I would be much more in support of something that is not six stories, four stories, possibly five, but six seems like a lot for me. Thank you. Additional comments? Um, Council Member Whalen. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just echo, I, I'm thinking of, and I could look at exactly where this is, but I know somewhere near the Twin Stadium, there's a building exactly like this with that little plaza area, but it is then, it's like a tunnel, but they like landscape it so it looks nice and there is then full, uh, like the upper stories cross over it. Um, and I would agree with everything that's been said. I frankly... Uh, I guess if you can give me a better answer than just it's confusing to have residential above it, I'm open to that, but that's happening everywhere. I'd say that's most new development that I've seen. If it's not just like when it is mixed use, it is first floor commercial with residential above it. Um, and so I, yeah, and I, I guess I'm, um, I'm less concerned about just the six stories in general. Um, I think this is getting closer to the, um, it certainly would be the tallest thing right there, but it's getting closer to like a downtown area. But frankly, I think, I, I guess I appreciate that it's not just the rectangle that the previous uh, proposal was, but I think it looks a little silly to have a one story thing next to this towering, like that doesn't feel like one development to me. Um, and then would also just echo um, the the concern about that parking ramp of just making sure that there's appropriate screening um, for all the cars coming out of there. Um. Thank you. Are there additional questions or comments? All right, Council Member Troutman. Thank you, Chair Supple. And maybe this is just a, a question. This is a little granular for the moment, but with with regards to the Stevens Avenue entrance and exit, would it be feasible to just make that an entrance so that headlights were never going across and have the exit go into the, the buffet so that the headlights would go into the buffet and as opposed to going into the neighborhood? So the tough part of that is, is the, 
If anything, if you have other ice or anything else for the officers, they can check out all their gear bags. No, not that it wouldn't move, but this would just be the the entrance would be on the on the east side, and the exit would be on the west side, just as it is. But they wouldn't; they would both not be two ways. The the grade prevents that. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, Mayor Regan Gonzalez. I forgot to add um, <clears throat> two other comments that I had here in my notes. So I would also encourage a neighborhood meeting, regardless of what happens. That's extremely important. We see when that happens, and we do work in partnership with the neighborhood, the city, and then the developers. We get much better um, project proposals with much better ideas that um, f that work better, particularly for the neighborhood and the community. Um, and then I forgot to add, I have my, my emails here, but I just wanted to say thank you to the neighbors that were here that contacted us and reached out um, with their comments, concerns, and also for being here today. So. Yep, so we've committed to a neighborhood group, a neighborhood meeting, so. Thank you for that. Other questions? I have two or three, but I wanted to make sure everybody else had a chance. Um, so I was also contacted by a neighbor that was wondering about the green space requirements for the lot. You mentioned there'd be solar on the top. Um, what about green space on the lot? Can you speak more to that? Uh, the green space on the lot on the lot is uh, the areas that we, we specifically did that so that the area that's closest to the uh, houses to the south are where we would propose landscaping and screening um, in this particular area right there. There's also, because of the building setbacks off of 66, there's uh, ample amount of uh, potential for uh, green space and screening along uh, Stevens Avenue. And... Um, few other spots uh, along 66 where the building steps back. All right, Assistant Community Development Director Paleman already answered the question that was raised about the traffic concerns and that there would be some kind of a traffic study. Um, a question was also raised about parking requirements. Is it, what are you currently planning for parking at this point? Uh, we, are, we are planning for a ratio of uh, 1.125 uh, for the units. Um, and then I believe it's three or four per thousand for the, uh, for the retail space. Uh, so we are right now at, I believe, requirements 97 stalls, and we're at 100, with majority of it being uh, enclosed underground. All right, thank you. Um, my biggest concern is also the height. I think that if you look around at the other retail all around that, it's all one story, and it's just jarring to have this big six-story building. So it's the suggestions of spreading it out, I think I would echo that. And I appreciate that you're willing to meet with the neighborhood and talk to them more about that as well. Thank you. Are there other questions that people have? All right, Council Member Whalen. I guess I would just briefly add, I think this is definitely, I'm not uh, the one to put forward an opinion on, but I would be curious what the neighbors think that, I guess if I was living there, I would be less uh, interested in having that, we've talked about the retail space or commercial space, but I guess the other one story, I think also um, I'd be cu genuinely curious to whether neighbors, if it meant it could come down to like four stories, would they be okay with having two stories there instead of just one, if that helps? Because I, I guess I am also aware of part of the reason the first proposal didn't pencil out is because there was only three stories, that having a taller building makes it work to have anything there. Um, so in, in the interest of finding space to have the number of units needed to be able to build something, um, I wonder if that is also an option and would encourage that to be part of the community meeting of is is overall height a bigger um, concern than height close to the neighbors? Um, 
one other question. Um, I noticed you had a variety of, of unit sizes. Are, <laughs> what about accessibility in those units? Yeah, we will be providing, uh, I believe we talked about 5% is the requirement. Um, and those will be spread out equally between the three types of units, um, studios and one bedrooms and twos. So I, I think for the number of units that we have, it equates to four units. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Councilmember Troutman? I just had a question. I had a question for staff. How long has that um, parcel been abandoned? I believe since uh, 20, either 15 or 16. I, yep, and I'm, I'm getting a yes from Assistant Director Palmer. Prior to that, it was maybe not technically abandoned, but would it be fair to say underused? It was underutilized for a long time. It was not, um, you know, it was not maintained like anybody would have liked to have seen it maintained for quite some time, for maybe 10 years. Yeah. No, oh, thank you. All right, are there any other questions? All right, um, Community Development Director Stark. Yeah, just while I'm at the mic, uh, just reminding uh, folks of what the next steps would be. Um, they would, the developer would have to come to the Planning Commission and the uh, City Council for a revised planned unit development and final development plan. Um, they had mentioned um, TIF. This is an existing redevelopment TIF district, uh, but they would then need to come to the HRA with a revised uh, or probably a brand new development agreement and possibly a revised TIF plan. Um, so that's that's what the future looks like. In terms of accessibility, uh, I think what was mentioned, the 5% unit, that's the, the, that's the minimal code requirement. Um, our um, affordable housing policy uh, is also an attainable or is a an, uh, an accessible housing policy and would require some units over and above the code required minimum. I, I can't tell you off the top of my head what that would be. The, the code requirement is the, the two percent and I believe that from reading your verbiage um, it, it's up to five percent. Sorry. All right, is there any further feedback that you need from this group? No, I just want to say thank you. We appreciate your comments and uh, we'll be back. All right, thank you for bringing this proposal forward to us. Thank you. And then we stand adjourned.